Our next speaker is perhaps one of the first persons that would come to your mind the moment we use the word environment. Dr. Sunita Narayan, the Director General of the Center for Science and Environment, will address us now. Thank you very much, and I'm really delighted to be here. And uh, Dr. Rambhuj, we um, thank you for asking me. And as you know, we both share a common boss, former boss, uh, Mr. Sarabhai. So it's very difficult for us to turn down orders from former bosses. So, <laughs> so thank you. Thank you, Mr. Barman, for organizing this. And thank you, Mr. Murthy, for gracing your, uh, for being here to grace this event. It's wonderful to be here. You know, I, I heard Ajay, I heard Kartike, I heard Donna, and I really believe that what they have said is such important messages. It's absolutely clear today that we are standing at a point which people like us had never thought was possible. I was at the Rio conference, as was, uh, I know, many of the people on the dais, and when we talked about climate change in Rio, we really thought it would happen at another generation. Not to us. We talked about it, we spoke about it, we were committed to making a difference, but we really believed it was something in the future. Yet today we are seeing the horrors being unleashed in our own world. The fact of the matter is, in this last August, the first 12 days of August, India has seen thousand heavy and extreme rain events. A thousand heavy and extreme rain events. Today, it, ra it does not rain. It pours. You have extreme rain, which is leading to a deadly cycle of floods and then drought. And we know all this is exacerbated. Climate change is not the only reason for this. So when um, very senior politicians from Mumbai say that the deluge and the flood in Mumbai is climate change, I beg to differ. The fact of the matter is, it is our own mismanagement of land, water. We are building on floodplains. We are destroying our drainage systems. We do not have ponds and tanks that we are protecting today. We are destroying every way that we could have coped with the excesses of climate change. So climate change is exacerbating that condition. It is not the primary cause of it. But the fact of the matter is, it is happening. And the fact of the matter is, it is impacting the poorest, most vulnerable in our world. I believe the immorality of our age is that it is the rich in the world primarily the rich in the Western world, and today the rich in our world, who are leading to the emissions in the atmosphere. And yet the victims of our excesses are the very poor in our world. I think that's the immorality that we should be discussing. And I raise this issue because I think it's important that the idea of environmental education needs to move a few steps ahead. I think we all are behind the curve. We are too polite. We are too genteel when it comes to environmental education. We talk about nice things to children, thinking that children will be lulled into thinking that their world will change. The fact is, and I think all of us old enough to be part of that and take the blame for it, the fact is, when we were at the Rio conference, we were innocent. We really believed we could change the world. Oh, so what if George Bush came and said the American lifestyle was not negotiable? So what? And I believe the reason we didn't change the world is because we did not push the envelope enough. We did not demand more. We, we were genteel about it. We were cautious about it. And we were lulled into nice, nice words about win-wins and, you know, everybody is nice in the world and everybody is going to join in and everything is going to change. The fact is, it's time we actually called a spade a spade. We moved ahead. And I believe if we don't do that, we are letting our own children down. 
And I think that's what environmental education is about today. They are telling us that enough is enough. They are telling us that the U.S. lifestyle is negotiable. They are telling us that business as usual is not good enough. And we will let them down. And that is why when CSC, the Center for Science and Environment, where I work, we designed our intervention in the area of environmental education. We structured it in a way that we would push the envelope. We have something called the Green Schools Program. Started 10 years ago with a very clear idea that we are going to ask children and schools to walk the talk. So what we started with was a manual in which some very difficult questions were asked. Issues were asked. We had a manual where schools set up an audit team and they are supposed to benchmark themselves in terms of where they are on the different sustainability practices. And it's tough. We ask questions like how many people come to school in a car? How many people, children come to a school in a diesel car? And then we ask the children to calculate the difference between a diesel car versus a bus versus a cycle. We look at what then is your own contribution. And that audit has become such a powerful way to be able to drive the change. Every year, we have about 3,000 schools who have to do the audit. And they do the audit, and they talk about the results. With CSC being CSC, we are not, we are not as I said, we're not happy enough to play the game. So we will ask them to actually benchmark where they are. And benchmarking is tough. You need to be able to talk about what your water usage is. How much rainwater harvesting are you harvesting? How much wastewater are you recycling? How much waste minimization have you done? What is your energy consumption? And it will not surprise any one of you to know that the most elite schools of this country have always come the lowest on our benchmark. It will not surprise any one of you to know that we can talk big about environment and we can talk big about the need for environmental protection, but we never hesitate to drive our diesel SUVs. And that's, in some senses, where we need to take this. When we started this, and, you know, uh, CSE, as you know, is a public research institution, environmental education, our Green Schools program, and Gober Times is our one initiative to, work, to reach out to schools. When we started it, I remember there was such a pushback. People telling me, these are inconvenient things. You don't talk about these. You should not be discussing these in schools. Because if children eat junk food or not, it's not your business. That is their right. It's your job to nudge them politely into thinking about their lifestyle changes. I'm sorry. It's time we stop nudging and cajoling and telling them what it is because that's what they demand from us. They need to know that. And they need to know that we are serious. We are losing the battle today. And they need to know that we will take this and take it that extra step. We have just launched, which I think is a very exciting effort, to, to not just benchmark schools and each year see improvement, but we've just launched a green campus program, which is particularly designed for universities. Dr. Bharucha is here, extraordinary environmental educationist. Uh, he, the, when the Supreme Court said that we need to have environment taught in colleges, we found that there wasn't enough information. And I see this particularly, and Donna, I hope you don't mind. I see this particularly because I think we need to put our politics out there. And often Western in 
environmental education, including issues on climate change, are just so politically neutered. They have no politics. They talk about all this as a sort of motherhood, motherhood and you know, all the rest of it. You know, it doesn't, so we need our own information out there. So we have started now producing what we call environmental readers for universities, and we've built a network of over now a thousand green educators in universities so that we can influence them to influence more. Because again, teachers are the biggest multipliers in society. My teacher today, I remember because I was taught the values that I today contain. That role is critical. And it is our job to reach out to you and tell you all is not OK. Please do not live in this bubble to think all is OK. But all can be OK if we push and we kick. And that's where Kartike, it's about time we actually kicked the habit, OK? <laughs> habit. We kicked and we created a different politics where we realize that it is us who have to change. The change will begin with us. Gandhiji, and we all love to quote him, always say, said, walk the change or be the change. But often we talk about these things, but we don't ask to practice the change. So that open laboratory of practice has to be something that we incorporate in our environmental education program. And I can tell you from the CSE's Green Schools program, it is a game changer. When children come to present their benchmark on water, on, on waste, on air pollution, they believe that they can do it because they have done it. That is where we need to go. So thank you very much once again for calling me. Thank you.